Hi, I'm Steve Shelburne, owner and operator of Shelburne RV here in beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee. Well, good morning. Welcome back to Shelburne RV. It's a bright, beautiful Monday morning. Glad to be back here. Glad you're here. Jan and I have been gone for the last couple weeks. We actually took a trip out to Alaska to see the sights. So we had a good time there and talked to several people who have RVs out in Alaska. And it's quite interesting to, uh, to talk to them about the road situation out there, you know, People talk about how rough it is, they ain't lying. That's a tough place for an RV. And uh, you know, if you've got problems up there, the dealerships are four to six months behind. And uh, if they can get you in, you're still talking 15 to 18 days to have a part shipped up there. So, cause they said, hey, even if you order parts, 15 days. So 15 to 18 days, crazy. So yeah, so here we are back back here today. We've got a bunch of stuff we're working on today. I've got another basement air and a Winnebago that came in a little bit ago. And we've got a slide on a horse trailer that, that we worked on that has stopped working. So I don't know, we gotta, we gotta kind of dig into that to see what's going on over there on that. But we'll see how things go. The uh, whole time we were gone, the boys only took in like 10 campers, so. It is a little concerning to kind of see what's going on in the industry. Um, you know, things are things are starting to slow a little bit. And a lot of the friends I have that have dealerships, they're, they're saying, the, you know, not a lot of people are buying stuff cause the, because the interest rates are high. And, you know, it's just uh, it's just what it is, the world we live in right now. So it's kind of, it's kind of curious. But anyways, I got to go down here and see GN for just a minute, and then we're going to get back up here and take a look at stuff. So glad you all here this morning. Got a Lakota horse trailer that came came in, and you guys may have seen this one on a previous video where the BAL slide system, the motor was way up in the back, and we couldn't reach it, and the motor was bad. Well, the customer brought it back saying that it only works when she has it plugged up to shore power. Now... We told her there's a good possibility that the batteries are bad. And she says, well, I've had two battery places check it, and they say there's nothing wrong with the battery. So I'm going to hook this test strip right here. Now, you got to remember this BAL stuff, when it's, pulling, when it's pulling power to do this, it could pull up to 50 amps. So when it's just on battery, we want to have a good, good solid battery. Now, you can see that one showing about... 12 volts but see when we put the load on it it's down there about eight and a half eight and a half volts well that's a bad battery that's a weak battery guys when we pull that down that 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 should move so we're going to put a set of batteries in it we're going to retest this and if that fixes it then we're going to have to have a little conversation with her about batteries so we're back here on this horse trailer as you can see we got two new interstate batteries on this thing Right now, I've let the batteries charge for about two and a half hours. I've got 12.8. Now, remember when we te load tested those batteries uh, this morning, we only had eight volts when we put them under a load. So Lewis is gonna go ahead and operate the slide. Go ahead and operate the slide now, Lewis. Okay, you can see with it going out, it's pulling 56.2 amps, but we're holding at 12.3 volts. Now, it is coming out slow, and I'll show you here when we get it all the way out, when we come in, it does come in a little bit easier. But as you can see from the meter, we're holding 12.2 volts, where before we were pulling down to eight volts. So obviously it was having trouble. 49.6 trying to go out, still at 12.1. Let's go ahead and run it in. So now you can see it's moving a little faster coming in. We're still at 12.25, pulling 36 amps. So again, guys, 
you got to have a good set of batteries. I mean, even with LCI, when they tell us to test this stuff, they want us to test it unplugged. Now, if I plug this thing in, which I'm going to show you here in just a second, let's, let's plug this in. I'll show you the difference between plugged and unplugged. And you got to remember, this is converter now, putting power in on this thing. Let's go ahead and run it out. Now, see how much faster it's going? But you got to remember, look at there, 12.76. So go ahead and run it in, Liz. So again, with converter power, we've got all the power we need. But with the batteries, now remember, I've only had these batteries charging for about two hours. We're going to let these batteries charge overnight and then see what we got tomorrow. And you'll see a big difference in a good set of batteries. So getting a new, uh, getting a new uh, concrete wall and door put in our showroom here today. Concrete guys are out here getting all that put in this morning, so you get to see that. Nice and cold in here. As you can see, the uh, ladies are all bundled up over there, so we'll see more here in a little bit. So we had this little J flight that came in with floor problems, and the customer was curious at where the floor would been leaking at. And so we're up here doing a seal tech on this thing. And as you can see, there's leaking right there. There's leaking right there there's leaking right there and all this over here is leaking let's show them the front of this thing mr james let's go up here and show them the front yeah all this back wall has got leaks coming out look at those bubbles blowing out right there all this stuff is leaking a little leak around the window right there got bubbles coming out right there that's all water getting in there that lights leaking like that lights leaking a little bit right there so this is all the challenge that we run into on this stuff and again all the water leaks that this gentleman had was all back here in the back and now we can see why all the water was running in here I mean, look how much look how look how much air is coming through there. I mean, that thing is you can see the you can see it moving right there. That thing's blowing water through it real bad. So this is the challenges that you run into on some of this stuff. You know, look look how much water. Look at these bubbles up here. Let me take you up here real quick and show you this. That's all a leak right there. So that's all water getting into this camper. So I had a customer bring in a late 90s holiday holiday Rambler, which back in the day, this was the Cadillac flagship of campers. This was an awesome camper. And look at this basement area. I wanted to kind of sh got, show you guys this because this is something that's kind of gone by the wayside. Um, these are gone. There's nobody working on them. This is an old RVAC basement air. And you can kind of see how the duct worked. The return was right here. Or the return was right here and then the discharge was right here but this was what came in a lot of the holiday ramblers now i've got one that i have actually retrofitted for a coleman now you can see how much room there is there's hardly none right there and there's hardly none right here um i'm going to take you out here because i've got another 99 out here that i did a retrofit kit on and i want to kind of show you what i had to do on that okay so here's the one that i actually did the retrofit kit on and we put the regular coleman basement air in it and see, I had to move everything that way, which means I had to cut into that bay. So it actually sticks through into that bay, maybe about eight inches. But then you see, I've got my ductwork that I had to build to do that. So some of these old ones can be retrofitted to the newer style Coleman basement airs. But again, I had to do a little bit of work, modify that. And then obviously, you know, ductwork was interesting, but it turned out good. I just want to kind of share that with you guys. So I've got a Damon Challenger in here that came in because the customer was complaining that the floor was getting wet over here by the slide. Now, the bulb seals all around this slide and around this slide were absolutely junk. So we went in there and replaced the bulb seals, seal teched it, got it all done. Customer came and picked it up. I get a call about two weeks later. He's sideways with me that he spent $1,800 and, you know, had to put all these slide seals in and the room is still leaking. So we brought it back. We seal tacked it again. We had one little small leak about right in there, just barely blowing any bubbles. 
but we got to noticing and he and 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 we had actually had the customer come up here and he said the leak was right here well we got to noticing a bunch of bubbles coming around this window now i've got my flashlight right here i want to show you guys this so i had a bunch of bubbles coming around the around the window well we got to looking and it's hard to see i don't know if you guys can see it or not look look what's inside look what's inside there see all that trash inside that drain so i'm opening this window up here and i want you guys to see this look at that right there guys the purpose of these right here are drains if this ever gets water in it which it will that's got to drain out those have got to drain that water out of there and so he has let this get all built up and you can see how bad this is and this thing has built up so bad that the water now is overflowing in there and going down and 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 getting in his floor so even though we did the seal tech and got that fixed up he still had a problem with the window so we're going to get that cleaned up we're going to we're going to clean all that up clean the drain now typically pipe cleaner is a good thing get those old pipe cleaners that your grandma used to use and those work good for going in there and cleaning that out but we got to get that drain clean and get that up and then we're going to retest that but but you know it's not always as easy as some people think and he was very mad at me about those seals but again we had to start there because that was a problem so as you can see i got my new door installed and got the block work done and we actually got the floor painted because we've got all new shelving coming in and then the painting company is coming sometime this week to try to paint the outside of the building but spent a bunch of time getting the floor painted for the new shelves so coming along pretty good well good morning welcome back i'm gonna share a couple things with you this morning before i get rolling here um you know i got to looking at some of my google reviews over the weekend and i had a uh, i had a lady call me a couple weeks ago i guess and she was she was one uh, want us to work on our pop-up now i don't work on pop-ups guys i know i say i'm full service but pop-ups are very challenging um pop-ups are are hard to find parts for i spend more time and it costs more to get those parts than most people are willing to pay for the pop-up so i just refer them on to somebody here in town there's a guy in town that does a very good job at those um, he's very good at what he does. So I just refer him on there to them. Um, and I guess this upset the husband because he went on there and left me a bad Google review. Said I was full service, but I don't work on pop-ups. Now, I guess I could have done like everybody else in the industry. I could have took it in and let it sit here for six months and then uh, then told him I didn't work on it. But, you know, I try to, try to help people. I'm a wealth of information. So I tried to push him on to somebody who could help them. But, you know, there you go. Um, had another guy leave me a bad bad review said said he had a problem but he could never get a hold of me now guys my cell phone number and my work number are plastered all over the internet and mr tim myers i know you're watching tim myers is a customer of mine from bismarck north dakota um, i actually sold him a part but how many hours did we spend on the phone tim talking you've called me multiple times i've always returned your phone call guys if you call me and leave me a message before the end of the day i will return that phone call I return every phone call I get. So I, 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 I think that's a, you know, comes back to some of these um, keyboard warriors, you know, they, 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 it's just easier to get online and call and, you know, get online and, 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 you know, instead of calling and going, Hey, I got a problem. Cause I, I try to work with people. I try to work things through, you know, within a reason, there's some things I can't help you on, but, but again, you know, I'm going to do whatever I can do to help people. You guys have been watching for a year. You know, you see the challenges that I deal with in this industry. You know, I want to help people, and I don't like that. That's just a sorry excuse to me. So, anyway, shout out to Mr. Tim Myers. Thank you. I've been good to talk to you. Give me a call anytime. So, guys, we're going to go around. We're going to look at a few things, get going this morning. So, there's my rant for the morning, but let's let's get going. So, I'll take you up here. So Brandon brought me up here on a Cougar fifth wheel. Customer was stating that they had some water coming in the back of the camper. Brandon, go ahead and move that with your hand. Show them what's going on here. Yep. Now the reason why, you gotta get your sealant checked at least every six months, guys. Listen, I've got a 2007 Vectra that came in and with the basement air and customer stated that the in a hot summer days, it cools, but not it can't keep up in hot summer days. Now I've run I've run the unit, 
Um, the amp draws are within a half of amp of each other. We've actually pulled um, some of the engine cowling off so we can look up in, up in the back because remember that duct work, we have issues with this. Not quite sure what's going on. I am going to show you one little problem that we do run into. So one thing we kind of run into on these is this hole, because on this thermostat, um, the thermostat is actually in the, right here. And so what happens is we've seen where hot air will sometimes come up in through here and actually fool the thermostat. There, there it is right there. There's your thermostat. So the hot air can come up here and actually fool this thermostat to do funny things. So we've got some foam that we're going to put across here. Most of them they found out later in, later on that, that they put a piece of foam across here where the wires actually have to go through the foam and that would eliminate that hot air coming through there. So we're going to do that and I'll show you what we got. So now you can see that Lewis has got that, and that's how the OEM went to later on in life because it keeps that hot air from coming up through there. So now that we've got the power management disabled on the air unit, you've heard us talk about that in previous videos. It'll be all right to do that. We've done that. That's about all we can do. The duck work was all good. So we're going to have a conversation with the customer about this. So Zach's been in here this week working on a Class, uh, class C that had a rear end collision. And I really haven't showed much because I've had so much other stuff going on. Uh, you can see there's the back wall that come out of it right there. And uh, he's pretty much got it all done. He's just doing the final tape up so he can do the paint, the paint work and all that. But we've got the all, all this is all brand new right here. Um, and you can see the bumpers off of it because the bumper was actually damaged. Uh, I've already built him a new bumper. It's all welded up, ready to bolt on. So he's just kind of getting this finished up now where we're going to get all that painted. So. Coming along on that, I just haven't had time to show you guys. I've had, I've had so many other problems going on with other stuff. So there you go. New wall on the back of a Class C. Well, this morning we're working on a big old voltage, as you can see right there. And the customer brought this in and said that this slide right here is not working. So Tori and I got to doing a little bit of investigating on this thing right here. And... I'll show you this. So we got to doing some looking on here and got all this pulled out. And lo and behold, there's a broke wire on that motor. So the thing is now we got to pull that motor. Okay, so to get that motor out of that rail right there, there's a tech screw behind this fascia. As you can see right here, this fascia piece here. There's a tech screw up there that's got to come out to allow the motor to rise out of the rack that's inside of there. But obviously we can't get the slide out to get the tech screw out. You drill a hole in the fascia. I mean, you see my problem here? So we actually called the manufacturer of the Twin Tech and asked them, you know, what's your solution here? And they told us the only solution is to get a pry bar and destroy the motor. So hopefully we're going we're gonna to do that now, and hopefully we don't tear up the rack or anything else, but that's the solution, get a big pry bar. So here we go. Yahtzee. Okay, so as you can see, I got it out, and we had to, you know, obviously it damaged that, but there's no other way to get it out of there. They literally told me to break it out of there. Well, good morning, and as you can see with... Uh, that little machine right there that's uh that's a tough morning for me so this office building down here friday developed a plug in the uh in the septic system so guess what i get to do this morning i gotta see if i can find the uh the lid for this tank and this building has not been pumped out in 40 years come to find out so yay me all right so you see we've been busy we we definitely have found the tank mr pete and i so we've got that out there now so we're gonna get the lid off and then I gotta call the pump guy. So good times here. So you saw kind of some of the other videos where they were, they put the new block wall in right there and they got everything, got everything in there. And I had the painters out here this week and they've got all this repainted and done. So that's looking good. So thought I'd show that with you kind of saw what we were doing there. So, all right. So I've got my septic tank finally fixed ended up 40 years of uh never being pumped before 
was a problem so we've got we found the we found the lid and got all that fixed and it's all it's all situated and working so you know when you got three women at the office that that are upset because the septic don't work yeah you got to get that done real quick so i've got that finished i've got to go down here to the office and see if they've got a part for a generator and then i've got a residential refrigerator that we're changing out on a uh on a big class a motor coach and they're going from one brand to another brand so i want to show you some of the some of the problems we're running in on that because they wanted to be just an easy swap and you know why it's monday why would anybody why would it even be easy today after everything i've been through with the septic system so the way it goes so i'm going to go down here and then i'll take you guys up there and we'll look at that right quick all right let's go take a look at this refrigerator i just got done i had a I had a customer that had a uh that's got a cummins 5500 generator and it's got pc pcm control board problems so i just got off the phone with cummins on that 130 day lead time that's basically about four and a half months so i'm gonna go through and see if i've got anything to salvage that with that number keeps throwing a code 19 which code 19 is um, actuator for uh, EFI. Doesn't even have EFI. And it only does it after it gets plenty warm. So I'm gonna guess that it's probably got a problem either with the P1 or problem with the uh, PCM board. But once again, can't get one. So this is the problem we run into. Let's go take a look at this uh, refrigerator we got over here. I wanna show you guys what's going on with it. Okay, so part of the problem we got going on here is this is a this one here is General Electric, and the refrigerator he's going to is LG. So the depth is different. This one's deeper. This one's actually wider. So we're going to have three quarters of an inch difference on either side here, and then because of these, now the trim that goes across the top has got to be modified. So. You know, this is the problem we run into on this stuff. And, you know, I had some comments on another video I did where somebody was, you know, very upset with ammonia refrigerators and he changed his to the residential. And, you know, that's fine. No problem. But the problem with residential is I'm not a fan of LG. There's nobody around here that works on them. The guy's got to come out of Nashville to work on them. Um, charges a three hour minimum. He won't pull it out of the camper to work on it, which means we've got to pull it out, just to get it in the floor space for them to look at it. And then that's the other problem. You know, got to pull the window out to get the thing in and out of there. And then if the LG doesn't last, but two or three weeks or a month or whatever, we're going to be in here pulling that again. So, you know, you guys, you guys bash, some of you guys are bashing your ammonia refrigerators. Again, maybe you ain't got the right guy working on it. Maybe you ain't got the right guy fixing it. But this, this, this is another whole, this is a whole nother set of problems. So, you know, hey, it's fine. Just had that conversation with the customer. It's going to obviously cost more time and more money to, to resolve this. So we're going to dig into it. That's my phone ringing. So back in a minute. So we've got a coachman freelander in here obviously you can see had some water intrusion there this is all dragging down this is the problem we run into on class c's and so now i've got to quote a rebuild on this and this is very challenging especially on these because show you guys how this is how cheaply built these are look at those stringers i mean all this is bad this is all rotted out. This piece right here going across here is rotted out. 
Now, this is a challenge we run into on Class C's. Besides the fact, this is not white. So, I can't even get this ceiling panel. All the ceiling panel that's available to me in the aftermarket is white. So, this is a weird color. So, yeah, these are some of the challenges we run into. Now, hopefully, if we do do the job, I'm going to pull this out and put a wider piece in there. This is aluminum across here, so we should be able to put some, some long screws in there from the bottom to hold that up. But, you know, even then, I don't think the customer wants to fix the filing on the front, which is going to be even tougher if we have to do that because that's another problem that we have with those. Well, good morning. We're down here in beautiful Ringgold, Georgia this morning down here at uh, G&L Services. Come down here to see my friend George. Now, you guys remember in some of the other videos we've done um, where we're taking the uh, 46515-811 Coleman and George is actually helping us do the modification to work in the replacement um, uh, 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 Winnebago basement airs that the high the high capacity ones that are no longer available so we're down here this morning we're going to get this unloaded george and i are going to take a little look on that we've actually got the very first one is actually already out in the field it's doing great um, i talked to david the owner uh just the other day he's down in florida and it's working great so he's tickled to death so we've got a brand new unit here that we're going to get all modified up uh, we had a few little changes that we wanted to make to it from what we did on the the last one so we're gonna get all that modified up here today and then we're gonna get it, uh, get it. we'll have it in stock ready for you guys when you need it. I got uh, Mr. Matthew out here, as George's son, right here at g &L Service. Now George got a, got a YouTube channel, so um, guys go on there and check out his channel. Uh, and you can see you can see what the HVAC system looks like in the in the world of doing HVAC. So let's go in here and check out and see what's got going on today with Mr. George. All right, well I'm back from g &L Services, just getting back here at the shop. Had a good meeting with Mr. George. We got a good plan on trying to get that basement air finished up so we can get that one ready for sale. As you can see in here, all my shelving is gone. Uh, Jean and I are gonna be in here this weekend getting that floor painted. And as you can see right here, all my inventory is in boxes. So I've got them coming in next week. She's got all brand new shelving and they're coming in to do a new store set uh, next week, uh, starting Tuesday. So. That'll be all rearranged and get all in different places and it'll look good when we get done with it. So thank you for watching. Appreciate everybody watching. Hope everybody has a great weekend. We'll see you again next week. And remember that this video is Cousin Gary Approved. Yeah.